and timing is everything. 10, 15 years ago, Zach would be the number one player pick. And, right. But because of all the conversation of the pace and space and three-point shooting, the mock drafts have Zach Eady, you know, low first, second round. Just your time with Zach, and I know he's a competitor because I, when he banked the three against Indiana, he shot the three. He was having a ball with it when I had the game. But right. improving his game and expanding and wanting to play on the next level, do you have those conversations with him in regards to his thoughts and feelings towards what he's receiving back in regards to the next level? I know he still has time to play here at Purdue. Right. He wants to win a national championship. But as a young player, the professional game is always in the back of his right. mind. Yeah, and, and I think for him, it's, you know, you, you don't draft yourself, right? It's it's wanting someone to take him and understanding what they're getting and understanding what he has to do to get there um, to where, you know, he can get into a rotation and he can help a team. Um, that's the commitment. Like, we've committed to him. You know, now he needs that next uh, organization to draft him, to commit to him, to have a plan for him. Hopefully it's an immediate plan, but if it's not an immediate plan, it's not that big a deal. Just the understanding of what he has to do, um, you know, to get there. The thing that would excite me is that he's in his seventh year of organized basketball. Like he, he's still getting better. He's still improving. He's not a finished product. And that's kind of scary for the success that he's had. But we had a lot of those conversations in the spring, just over the decision, right? Um, you know, and he had great representation that really helped him and kind of let him know, like, where do you want to improve? You know, last year he wasn't going to go to the NBA and play. You know, can he go to the NBA and play right now? You know, that's, you know, that's their call. Like, I'm not an NBA coach, but I do know he keeps getting better. I do know he's a better passer. I do know he's a better rim protector. I do know he's a better, you know, in ball screen defense. He's way better in ball screen defense um, than he used to be. But is it good enough? And when you go to an NBA game and you got to be able to see both, the, the speed is so much different. And that's what he's going to have to adjust to. The game's not going to wait for you. We wait for him. And, but I, I just think, you know, with his work and the way he's done it, he's going to make those strides and whatever they need him to do and whatever they need him to work on, he's going to put that kind of time into it. But um, there's a really good basketball player in there. You know, if he was six, four, he would still be a good basketball player. He's intelligent. He knows what's going on. His skill is improved. He would play differently, right. but he's not. And this is the way he is. If you saw some of the things he did at the end of that Tennessee game, you know, catching a ball on a dive and being able to avoid somebody with a sidestep, blocking that shot at the end of the game, like, you know, those are big-time plays at big-time moments. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's going to be a good NBA player. But once again, it, it's getting somebody that's going to commit to him is, I think is the most important feature of this. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.